Hey guys, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in a blustery Pittsburgh, PA. Talking to a friend from Florida this evening and some women's wrestling. But first, please go check out all the interviews we're doing at the Indie Mayhem Show over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and all the other great shows we have over there as well about all aspects of professional wrestling. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or video versions on the YouTube and Facebook uh, uh, for Wrestling Mayhem Show, actually, uh, and including uh, some live streams, some of the raw, uncut feeds from our interviews, or you can catch it live on our Facebook as well. We're, we're, we're on Facebook Live as we are recording this as well. Maybe you're joining us here live. Hello! And please feel free to ask any questions whenever you see us pop up with an interview, with a live show. We love the fan interaction. Uh, so hey, let's get into it. Uh, so we got a great guest here. First, big, big uh, shouts to Trey. Uh, Tregar out there. Uh, he went to Rise in Chicago, and I think uh, I think a couple other shows over the weekend as well. Uh, and uh, he he brought us he he spread the, the word of mayhem, and I super super appreciate it. And from that, we're talking now with uh, on the line Arya Blake uh, from Florida, from warm warm Florida. I know she doesn't think it's think it is at sixty degrees, but uh, <laughs> how you doing tonight? Um. Slightly chilly, but good, good. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, we like to get to know our guests on the show with a little icebreaker here. What is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? I was like 13 or 14, and I have a younger brother who I think he was like 10 or 11 at the time, and he was a big wrestling fan, and he doesn't really watch anymore, so that sucks, but... One Friday night, I think, I was just hanging out with him in his room, and he had SmackDown on, and, like, I knew of wrestling, but, like, really, I didn't. (laughs) So, I was just watching with him, and I was just fascinated. I was, like, I remember seeing, like, Jeff Hardy, the women's match, and I was, like, those things were what really caught my eye, and, like, this cool, flippy style, and the fact that girls can do this, too, like, I became obsessed. Nice. So how did you go from there? Was it just like that obsession kind of turned into, I have to figure out a way to get into the ring? Basically, when I first started watching, within, I'd say, even like the first like two minutes, not knowing anything, like having no idea that it was Maurice, Michelle McCool, Victoria, Maria, like in the ring or anything, I was like, yep, this is what I need to do. (laughs) So I have been a fan ever since. And when I was 19, a school opened about a half hour from my house and it's J school. So I was like, all right, this is, you know, now or never. Mm -hmm. Like I agreed to the school before I even knew how I would pay for it. (laughs) (laughs) Were there any concerns? Like how much did you know about what went into pro wrestling at the time? Like, did you, did you, did you know the physical toll it would be? Um, well, of course I knew it would be physical. And when I started training, I'd obviously gone back and watched a ton of things from before I actually started watching things from years and years and years ago. But I, I mean, it's totally different when you get in there and take your first bump and you have to be crazy to want to keep going. But here I am. <laughs> well, that, that was, um, so, so I'm trying to think, uh, where, where you were as far as, uh, uh where, where wrestling was in the WWE at the time. Uh, mm-hmm. because I, 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 there was certainly a time where the wrestling was really suppressed and obviously we just had our, yeah. our quote divas revolution, uh, as it was called. Um, was that disheartening going through that time or were you still hooked on it ever through? Um, at the time, like when I first started watching, like I didn't really know any better, but as I explored my wrestling horizons, saw more indie stuff, stuff from years past, I was like, this is all right. It's, it kind of feels like it's not as good, but whatever. And then just as I got to know more about wrestling, I was like, okay, like, I guess when I started watching it, like women's wrestling wasn't really anything to like harp on Mm -hmm. but it's gotten so much better and like it had to have those like kind of crappy moments i guess for it to get as good as it is now (laughs) it's gotta you got you gotta hit the bottom before it it it, it can (laughs) hit the heights right yeah that's what i'm trying to say (laughs) it's amazing um you can only go up from bra and panty matches and 30 second matches right exactly exactly um (laughs) was that a concern getting into it that that's the kind of thing that you would be asked to do um i would i was really hoping not (laughs) i was like because the way i see it is like there can be two types of women's wrestlers especially during a time like that 
there's the girls like Trish, Lita, Molly Holly that would go out there and really do stuff. But then there would be the other girls who are like, oh, by the way, pick up our Playboy. We're going to go have like a mud wrestling match now. <laughs> like, I'm like, so I feel like there's two roads of women's wrestling, or at least there was. And I always knew like, okay, I want to be a wrestler. I don't want to just like stand there, look you like wrestle in whatever gross shit they can put in a pool. Like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, uh, going from there, of course, uh, it, 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 say this is a great time for wrestling. There are a lot of promotions uh, uh, out there on the indies, and and, and definitely strides. Uh, uh, well, actually, let's 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 roll out that since we're kind of on what WWE has been doing lately. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, we had our first pay per view main event, not NXT, although that was amazing too, uh, with with Charlotte and Sa- Sa- Sasha. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> it's cold down here. Uh, <laughs> uh, what did you think about the, that kind of moment for that? I was so happy about that. Um, Sasha's actually my favorite wrestler. So to know that somebody like her was in the main event just made me so happy because I really like adore her, not even just for what she can do in the ring, but just who she is. Like, tr- like She's just a wrestling fan at the end of the day. So to know that that's somebody who's had this dream for so long and watching them like have it come true and main event, a historic match like in a cell, like... That's when is that going to happen again? When has that ever happened? Mm-hmm. So that was really fun to watch. And I'm like, you know, I'm so glad that we're going in this direction now. Thank God. And like I said, there's a lot of opportunity on the indies. Uh, obviously, you for that weekend, I believe you were at both Rise and Shimmer in Chicago, correct? Correct. How was your experience with those promotions, which are both like pretty amazing promotions doing great things with women? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um so Rise, it was the first Rise that we had. Um, basically, it started with a seminar during the day, and then later that evening we had a show. Um, I wrestled Angel Dust, which was so good because, unfortunately, where I live, there's not a ton of veterans of the ring around here, um, in this part of Florida at least. So rarely, if ever, am I working people that have been around for much longer than I have. So working a vet like her was really good. Just getting to hear how she would explain things and pick her brain and get her ideas was really fun. She beat me, so that wasn't fun. But um, the show went really well. Um, And then the next day started Shimmer. We had one taping that night. The following two days, there were two tapings each day. So it was busy, but I took so many notes, met so many people, got to go to my first shimmer shows, which I've wanted to do for so long. Like it was amazing. I, I still kind of can't believe it really happened. Cause I'm like, I've been watching women's wrestling for so long. And here I am at like easily the top women's promotion in the world, just hanging out. Like what even, what a well, I mean, I, I can't imagine there's a lot of opportunities to have, get that much ring time over a course of a weekend too. Yeah. Um, there was a ton of us, but, I mean, I got a good amount of ring time at Rise and everything, and that's truly where I was going to get the ring time. Um, and then some girls got time in the ring at Shimmer. So that was really good for them. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, uh, the uh, Trey, of course, kind of giving me the report from the event here saying, of course, Angel Dust uh, went on to to take on other friends of the show that we talked to. Uh, I've talked to on here several times, uh, Delilah Doom, Britt Baker, and then another one, uh, uh, Kate Carney, uh, that I'm not familiar with. Uh, you know, what do you think about those talents and kind of seeing seeing uh, those girls, maybe maybe experiencing them for the first time? It was really cool. Like those girls and the other girls I met that I didn't know before. Like I left there with so many new friends, so many new ideas from seeing all these different people from different backgrounds wrestle. It was really cool. It was like a little gathering of all of us that are kind of on the same page where, you know, we're not completely new. It's not our first time in the ring, but we want to be at that shimmer level. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Uh, I understand in Florida at uh, ACW, I believe, uh, you are currently the women's champion. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with uh, that promotion down there? Right. So that is um, kind of like my home company. I've been with them for, I think it'll be two years in the spring. Um, It's a really great place. It's not that far from my house, which I don't mind. Um, (laughs) It's a good family of people. Um, They gave me a chance as a um, valet. And then as soon as I kind of felt comfortable enough in my training, I was able to get in the ring and have matches. Um, 
intergender matches, regular one-on-one women's matches, tag matches, whatever have you. And it's been nothing but great. I love it there. And I won my first title there. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and I understand you've been having some issues with a girl. Uh, somebody's been getting your face by the name of Gemma. Jenna? Yeah. <laughs> that happened <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so uh and, and, and it looks like acw is having a uh kind of a, a a partnership here with shine uh you know uh being you know looking forward to that another great women's uh, uh, uh promotion here uh as well as a partnership with flow Sam, flow slam can you speak a little bit of that and what what that can kind of mean for a little bit of women's wrestling getting out there and flow slam has been absolutely everywhere over the last couple of weeks i've noticed Right. So with that, so Shine, uh, ACW, FIP, Evolve, we're all under the WWN brand, the World Wrestling Network. So it's kind of like it's an umbrella of sorts, like with these smaller like indie companies under it. And um, with that, the opportunity on Shine was to kind of represent ACW the last time I was there. And that was fun. It kind of gave us like a, a hey, like check us out on Flow Slam, too. And then we had that show this past Saturday and that's when Jenna got in my face again. <laughs> but, um, you know, flow slam has been great. I'm really, it's so cool that we're able to have this platform and get out to more people, especially in terms of women's wrestling with shine and everything. So it's, it's great to see just, just like, yeah, that indie wrestling just, just being propped up and, and being accessible to everybody. It seems. Yeah. So, um, because I remember like struggling to have to try to find like, where can I watch this? Where can I watch this? And now it's like, it's all right there, like on a platter for us. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, this was a, uh, again, a, a question and I don't have any context for this. So, so I'll put this <laughs> out here, but, uh, uh, Trey wanted me to ask, how hard is it to find food for Dominic, Dominic Fabiano? Dominique. Dominique. I'm sorry. Uh, uh um, <laughs> can you give us a little background on this. <laughs> okay. It can, so she and I are both vegetarians. So like we're oh. very, very similar. But she has celiac disease and can't eat gluten. Like, oh. I don't have that problem, luckily. So, like, when we were in Chicago, like, we stayed with her family. And, like, having food there wasn't a problem. But it would be, like, after the show, let's grab something on the way back. Okay, wait, we need to think about this. Like, where can we go that will accommodate all of us? Because there's three of us, like, hanging out. Like, it was me, just, like, vegetarian, whatever. Dominique, vegetarian with a gluten allergy, and MJ Jenkins, who doesn't have any problem, eats meat, normal person, whatever. So, like, trying to find something to accommodate all of us was just pretty funny. <laughs> That's great. Um, and uh, he also wanted me to ask you about a hilarious Twitter airport story that kept uh, many of you guys entertained <laughs> over Sl Shimmer Weekend. God, okay. So... <laughs> I was originally going to stay on Sunday and leave Chicago around like 8.30, 8.40 to head back to Tampa. And I had to, some stuff came up and I had to switch my flight, whatever, no big deal. So I ended up leaving at around noon. Didn't get to go to Shimmer at all that day. It really sucked. Really wish I could have been there. But regardless, I was heading back to Florida and I'm sitting in Midway Airport just like, I hadn't slept in like two days. I didn't really eat a lot and I was freezing. So I was like already unhappy before I even stepped foot inside Midway Airport. <laughs> and I get in there and I feel like just everybody that I interacted with was just like put on this earth to bother me. <laughs> like I forgot that I had a monster in my bag when I went through TSA, like God forbid. And so they're like this like over enthusiastic TSA worker, like God bless him. He's trying to make my experience easier. And I'm like, literally just stop talking. It's a can of monster. Just take it. I just want to go sit down. And then I go to sit down at the gate or terminal, whatever. And like, there's no seats. I'm like, all right, I'm late, whatever. This guy keeps staring at me the whole time. He's like old enough to be probably like my great grandfather. And I'm like, just literally just don't even look at me. Like, please don't acknowledge my existence. I know my hair is really red, but you can stop staring. <laughs> so like, he keeps like creeping on me. He had like all of his stuff in the seat next to him. I'm like, sir, your Dasani water bottle does not need its own chair. Like I am a human being and I'm laying on the floor, but that's fine. <laughs> 
So then I get on the plane and I'm like last aboard because I switched my flight and everything and checked in kind of late. And I get back there. I'm like, okay, well, we're just going to keep walking back to the very, very back because I don't want a middle seat. We'll see what's here. Well, that was like all that was available. So I get to the very back row, middle seat. And the people I'm sitting in between, I'm like, okay, there's a girl who's about my age that got the window seat. And then just normal looking, slightly older dude on my other side. This can't be too bad. Well, homegirl decides to start throwing up. And, like, I don't know if she was having, like, an anxiety attack or, like, the stomach flu or what. But she was, like, heavy breathing and, like, sweating and, like, shaking and getting up to go to the bathroom. And I felt really badly for her because, like, I don't like flying either. But I'm, like... Why are you in the window if you need to get out to the aisle and everything? Like, give me the window seat. And she was gone, like, half the flight anyway, so that wasn't bad. But it was, oh, my God. I just did not want to deal with any of that. (laughs) And then I got back to Tampa. It took a little while to get my luggage. One of my really good guy friends picked me up, and everything was, like, fine. After that, I got to sleep. But I'm just, like... I haven't had too many airport experiences, but I'm like, I don't deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, oh, it's I just think, one thing after the other. I think I think you've answered one of my uh, later questions that we usually ask here, but we'll get her back around to this. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so from there, what are you watching these days? What's really got your attention uh, in the wrestling world? In the wrestling world? Um, of course, the places that we were just talking about, ACW, Shine, Shimmer, like, I definitely try to keep up with the indies, but this day and age, there's so many of them. Um, I'd say what I pay the most attention to, though, uh, NXT, Raw and SmackDown. Like, I have to DVR them sometimes, but I'll watch it when I can. Um, Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, uh, TNA when I can. Like, the main, like, the bigger companies mostly, and then some of the indies. Right, right. And again, I think you answered half of this, but we like to ask, <laughs> and you can take this uh, um, however direction you want to, what's the best and the worst thing about uh, working in indie, in indie wrestling? Ooh. The best is I get to do what I love, and I'm so new to the business. I've only been around for like two years, but there's people that give me a chance. I just get to have fun doing what I like, learning from people. Like, that's all a fun experience. The worst, I would say, is, hmm, it's not even really the worst. It's not that bad, but I'm, it's being able to not, like, not being able to wrestle as much as I would like to. Like, um, when you're signed somewhere, you're filming, like, every week or something, whatever. And, I mean, sometimes there's, like, a week or two in between bookings for me, and it's, like, you just get the itch. You just want to wrestle all the time, but it depends when pe- like places want to run, I guess. Exactly. All right. From the, so, where can people find you online? Everything is at the Aria Blake. Um, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I don't really use my Snapchat, but it's there. Um, Facebook, all that good stuff. Awesome. Uh, so go check her out, Aria Blake. She has a lot of stuff on YouTube, and of course. Uh, uh, being featured over on Flow Slam as part of those promotions, uh, and check out—we all you just say, "Hey, support indie wrestling." But I think very, very specifically, let's say this week, support women's indie wrestling. Support, yes, support, support women's wrestling in general. Uh, it, it's definitely been—it's uh, definitely been the hot thing. I, I know a lot of promotions here in this area are really kind of responding to that as well. Uh, so that's really, really cool to see. And there, there's more and different faces coming in. Uh, every day to these promotions and and it's great to see things like what what trey went out to and and you experienced out there in chicago uh with with all the shows it's really awesome so um where is our our women's wrestling wrestlemania weekend that we're gonna get in the in the future right so (laughs) well thank you so much for joining us and thank you guys for joining us here in the live chat room or later on any of the fees again please if you like this if it's your first time experiencing the Indie Mayhem show, is there anybody you think we should talk to on the show? Let us know. The email address is goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. The uh, hotline is 412-206-WMS0. Uh, check out, you know, tell us anybody you want us to talk to, any questions for anybody that we've announced coming up. 
or um, any any wrestling promotions you think we should be checking out. Uh, we only have so much time, unfortunately, uh, but but we have may, uh, many in the Mayhem Nation that, that's keeping uh, tabs on all this stuff. And on all together, we're covering a lot and, and talking about a lot on the Slack and over the also at the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Facebook group. So please join us over there. Thank you so much to our guests. You guys out there, please support indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.